both this is the uh, genuine McCoy here this is a uh, oiler pit by GR manufacturing out of Mesquite Texas this company has been around since uh, old uh, 1968 this pit was invented so this is the Blue Kahuna called the 800 uh, I believe it, it does uh, like I don't know a thousand pounds a lot of a lot of meat in here so Junior is uh, one of those special pit masters that he has a real Kahuna because if you are a pit master and you run a restaurant this is the wood burning pit that you want. It burns only wood, and uh, it's one of those, the only one in the world that's UL listed. So that for those of you who are opening restaurants, this is going to be run flush up against the wall. This is just the front of it. There's a whole piece behind. So when Junior built his restaurant, they dropped this pit, which is several thousand pounds, on the cement pad, and they built a restaurant around it. So this is a fantastic pit. We're gonna, Junior's gonna show us how he sets it up and starts up the pit. So we can cook uh, briskets and get ready all the meat for tomorrow's big tuna Uriah's day. Folks, uh, if you don't know, this is another brand, right? You, if you brand, run a restaurant, right. you got the Old Hickory, you got the Myron's, and you got the uh, JR Manufacturing. These are the three top, yeah. top, uh, you know, equipment. Uh, Junior always buys the best, man. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, there's a reason why I like using different equipment for different meats because they don't all cook the same. Yeah. A lot of people think well, this particular smoker, if you do chicken ribs, brisket, and one smoker, it all tastes the same. So. We do briskets over there. The majority of the time I do chicken and just sausage here, but today I've, I've got a lot of things happening. So we got ribs in here. But they each smoker cooks each protein different. So um, that's why I like diversity. Diversity. And then not to mention, if you have more than one pig, if something goes wrong, you're not SOL, man. And if you run the restaurant, you cannot run on one pit. You because cannot. these things are mechanical, right? Even right. though they'll run for many years, the day it breaks down, yeah. the day you have no service. That's right. And then you got uh, you know, 500 pounds of meat stuck. Yes, 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 <laughs> Nowhere exactly. to go. And then in, in, you know as well as I do uh, in the catering business, there's no room for error. No room for error. There, uh, uh, you know, at a restaurant, a pop-up restaurant or something, if you run out of meat or the food's not cooked, you just don't sell it. When you're doing caterings, the people are expecting you to be ready with the food at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, it don't matter, whatever they want to eat, they want to eat. They want to eat. There's no time right. for uh, running behind or, or anything mistakes. like that. That's why I use a lot of diversity in my equipment. I have to because of my catering business. Minimal fuel, once again, Harry, look at that. Yeah, okay. Minimal fuel. Minimal fuel and uh, really very efficient. 225 right there. 225, wow, that's not a lot of, not a lot of fuel considering the smoker is this size, right? So very, very efficient. Yeah. Very. And then, um, well, we built up the coals. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're that about took about an hour to build out the coals. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. briskets coming out of the oiler pit. Uh, how many hours did we put in last night? These, uh, these are going on 10, uh, 12 hours. 12 hours brisket. 12 hours. 225, 12 hours. So, for people who are going to ask me what's the difference between 250, 275, and 225, what can you say to them? Uh, that's all right if you suppress it with time. Yeah. So uh, for people who say that you know they have a good temperature, you say one good temperature, everybody's different. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you, uh, you like two twenty five. I, I like two twenty five because man, I think you can't it replace the low and slow. No, you really slow. Can't. I, can't. I think it breaks the fibers down to another level. Slowly going back into the pits. Slowly going back into the, the pits. Secret, secret okay. processes. Process. You can tell you, I'm gonna kill you. Yes. <laughs> See Harry, we got a small down payment right here. Small down payment. So uh, I think you told me it was a twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. Thirty. Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. And then to put it in with all of the venting, putting, improvements, and another ten k. Easy. 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 Yeah, really so easy. folks, you saw the front. This is the back end. Julia is going to show us how he runs this pit. This is the uh, only all wood burning pit that you can buy. And uh, many, many restaurants around the world use this. And it burns for a long, long time, almost like 24 hours. Yes. The embers hot. They are. So Junior's uh, sifting up the uh, ash. Now, what kind of wood are you using? We're using a uh, pecan. Pecan wood, yeah. Pecan wood, and maybe uh, like nine percent, uh, 90 pecan, and then 10 percent uh, mesquite. Mesquite. So for the briskets. Yeah, we're in Texas, so 
Uh, mesquite is the flavor of choice here, but only 10%. So pecan is very much like uh, hickory. Uh, right. Also, like kind of live at post oak. So pecan is a favorite among pit masters. A lot of us on the copper team circuit. That's what we use. We use pecan because uh, it will burn for a long time without over smoking your meat. Right. So he's using a little starter here. We start the fire. And then how many logs uh, an hour usually? Maybe one log. So, so one, 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 one piece per hour. Uh, about something like this, about an hour. An hour. So well, this, uh, this pit is super efficient, right? Very, very uh, insulated. Very That's insulated. why it's a favorite among uh, restaurant owners and commercial operations. One, one little small stick like this, with my hand present, will burn about, about an hour. At least an hour. At least an hour. And then uh, we're going to cook a 14 hour brisket. Correct. So about 14, 14 pieces of yeah. yeah. First I want to get my coats built up. Yeah. Once I get my coats built up, about one stick an hour. So that'll be a... Uh, be about right. About right. Cool. And then uh, the uh, people will ask me where to buy this thing. This is the handiest tool I've got. Yeah, what's it uh, it's just, I think they call it like a benzomatic uh, right here. Yeah, what's it, the name of the company? Right. People ask me about it here. Propane uh, JT850. By what company? Benzomatic right here. Okay, all right, folks. So for those of you who want to buy this, uh, go, go to Benzomatic. I'll, I'll leave the link in the Amazon store. And uh, this is a really handy tool to use. It really but is. This this will last me maybe about 10 uh, startups. 10 startups, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And you can tell we're convenient to hang in there. Don't have to worry about yeah. all those, uh, you know. That's right. Uh, got lighter fluid and everything. Yeah. So folks, if you want, this is how you start up your pit professionally. You know, and, and a lot of people miss with the big propane torches. Yes. It's, it's too, uh, these are super light, quick, easy. I mean, even what's cool about it, Harry too, is this watch. Yeah. Just, oh, it's got just a like small, that. Smaller. It's got its own uh, ignition. Oh, igniter. System. So igniter. the igniter is there. Okay. So you just do it like that. Yeah. Okay. That's super convenient. Yeah. So for you, you home cooks out there who want to start up your pit, this is a definitely a simple device yeah. to buy. And you just hang it on the wall, and then you're all set. Five logs in there. Five, five pieces. Yeah, about five pieces. Five pieces. And, and then uh, uh, how long? How long does it take up to come together? Uh, maybe about an hour. We'll about get it up to temp about an hour. So right now we're just gonna burn that down, and then uh, let's continue to build up the coals. Once we get the coals built up, then we can get uh, one log at a time to get the brisket smoking. Okay. Good, clean, pure smoke. No, uh, no junk smoke. It's all good, clean smoke. And I tell people uh, where you get your wood from. I got the uh, bar and ice out of Lubbock, Texas. Love of Texas. Good, okay. good uh, quantity pecan that I get from them. Okay, pecan. Sorry, this is the pecan. Right. Pecan. And, and then where's the mesquite? Mesquite. Uh, I'll bring one okay. chunk in at a time. Oh, one chunk in. But this is about nine months season. Nine months season. Yeah. Perfectly, okay. perfect for these uh, smokers yeah. right here. So for those of you who want to know what the secrets are, nine months seasoning and the uh, actual amount of moisture is 12 percent. Correct. So yeah. That's what us uh, uh, competition pit master uses. Pecan logs, nine months, yes. 12 percent. The moisture you can tell easily yeah. if this is gonna break easily. Okay. So Perfect. That means, uh, that means it's seasoned properly, seasoned properly. And, it, and it's not crumbling apart. Right. You see? So you want basically all the resin, right? So as I told right. you in my previous video, this is lignin, right? In yeah, here. So right. you want to paralyze the lignin because that it creates the magic of barbecue. So you need to have wood that's not kiln dry. Right. So we don't buy any cooking wood that's kiln dry because it's not gonna work. So buy uh, what you call naturally dried wood, about 12%, nine months old, and uh, use pecan. If you don't know what to use, that's the best all round. Right. right. And you want to find a good source. You want to make sure you get in your pecan or, or any any uh, woods from a rep reputable dealer because you don't know where the wood the woods coming from. So you got to know where it's coming from, where it's been, away from toxins, chemicals. Uh, people spraying for weeds. You don't want none of that stuff on it. So this stuff is super clean. All right. So you heard it, man, from the expert, right? Yeah. Junior gave you just a quick tutorial on wood. You okay. see how the wood's going out right now? Okay. So this is a damper system, right? Right. So there's an actuator here that measures the temperature in the pit, and it adjusts the uh, the damper up and down accordingly, right? Correct. So when it needs more air, it opens it up, right, and it vents out to the chute up here. And uh, you, then he controls it and then gets enough smoke in there, right? Correct. And then this, this damper, is you leave it open, how does it work? It's, the, it's on the actuator too. It, the, you see how it works? When the damper closes, this closes too. So, oh, so okay, so, so this 
this little area here goes up yeah. and down, moves, right. sets up the actuator, comes down here, and this one shuts off the fire, uh, what do you call a uh, damper here. So it's very, very sophisticated, right? You have an intake damper, right. you have a full control system, actuator here for the smoke, and then actuator here for the chimney. So that's why this is the, the number one pit, if you are a pit master in the world, pit master swear by this unit. You have some of these uh, oilers, right? They were made in 1958, they are 40 years old, they're still working. And working 24-7 every day. That's so right. 40 years later, the oiler is still working. Correct. So that's you are, you that's why master, you gotta buy one of these. That's why I got one. You yeah. know, it's a lot of money, but you know what? This is a heartbeat of my business. Yes. It really is. It's the smoker and that... And this will, this will outlive and outlast us. Yes, so yes. And it, that's all we do is briskets in this one. Briskets in this one. Then we do on the Myron Mixon, the 72 XC, 72. we do uh, all pork, pork, which we'll be doing the whole hog in it also. Yeah. Does it need a lot of maintenance? No, minimum maintenance. So you gotta clean out the grease yeah. tray. And I'll tell you what, for people who get it, make sure you get a grease trap and tie it into the system. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Grease yeah. trap. Okay, so very important for those of you who want to open a restaurant and use the same pit, make sure you have a grease trap here. It, does, it exits out here and then you, everything is easy. You don't have to go crawl in there and try to do a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. Right? You still got to scrub every now and then, but man, you can degrease everything. Everything goes through here and so go out. what is the degreasing cycle usually? Once a week? Well, I do it once a week. Once a week, right? You, you can go probably go two weeks, two but weeks. I'd like once a week just to maintain yeah. it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easier to clean, and, uh, and and like I said, this is so easy. Yeah, I don't have to haul jugs of, of five gallon buckets. Yes, so it just goes in here, and then there's uh, a how many gallon grease trap do you have under the ground? I got a, I think it's a fifty thousand gallon okay. grease trap. And then uh, usually when you set a restaurant, that cost tens of thousands to put in. Right. Right. Very expensive, yes. but so when you buy this, you need to put in a grease trap. So yes. make sure you budget money for the grease trap. Exactly. You can see it back here. Alright, grease trap back here? Yeah, they're set up on the grease traps. Yeah, see here, there's a grease trap for it's his uh, Myron Nixon water okay. smokers. And uh, Junior is the only person I know, at least here around here, who has two of them. Alright, so these are like $18,000 each. Yes. Very and expensive. then these are custom hoods that I built, Harry. Yeah, you built, right? Yeah. And, uh, do not touch this thing, right? It'll kill you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Junior's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. And then, so these are your four cookers, right? Yes, oh, I'll do, uh, we'll do uh, the whole hog in this one tonight. Okay. But here yeah, it is. What's nice is uh, they have uh, four racks, right? Like, they, you can put four uh, racks. Four racks there, yeah. I only mean, utilize two, two racks, racks because I like the flow of the ribs. You can get good airflow through it. Yeah. I think if you use the four racks, you congest the flow. Okay. So uh, we use two racks for our pork ribs. I put quite a few in there. We're just going to use this rack for the whole hog tomorrow. I'll take this one out. All right. And then uh, this is called a water smoker, Myron Nixon H2O. Correct. And uh, you can see it has a big, huge, humongous water bath. So the firebox is right here. So you heat up the water. So the water boils. And uh, what is nice about this is that uh, it has a simple system to drain, right, and to fill, right? Correct. So you have a drain and a fill system. That's why uh, it's called an H2O smoker. Yeah. And uh, it's got its own uh, control system here. So you can kind of have a little bit of automation. This one, uh, the reason I got that, Harry, is for uh, to heat up my pit and insulate. Uh, once you hit it up, I, I uh, quit using. Uh... Whoa! Oh, look at oh, that! Okay, here. Whoa! Man. Uh, you need to go into the cleaning cycle. Open yeah. the valve in the back. Alright, so the valve in the back opens up. And what you do is you drain the liquid. It goes into a grease trap. So if you run a restaurant, you must have a yeah, you know how much grease trap you could be using a uh, restaurant. And uh, the water pan will drain, like so. And this is, uh, I don't know, maybe, I want to say at least 50 gallons, at least. Yeah. Then this is hot water. Hot water, okay, hot water wash. Yeah. Quick easy, hot water wash. We'll do a no, no degreaser either, right? No, no degreaser either. No. Hot water. Uh, like once a month, I'll degrease it. Okay. But right now it's just a simple. So you easy, easy clean. So if you run a restaurant, you want to get one of these pits, you just uh, basically do a hot water wash. Check the fire. Fire is burning really good. Right. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, add a little thicker logs. Thicker log, okay. So Stack it. it. Yeah. And then I always cross them. Always cross them, right? Yeah. Right. Like that. And uh, what what is the temperature set on the controller? 
Uh, two, 200. Oh, 210. 210. So you like 210, right? Yes, sir. 210, about 14 hours? Yes, sir. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is you got to go the other side of the uh, unit here. And uh, so evac, evac means to get the exhaust clean, not clean out the pit so you can open right. it. So you don't get smoke in your eyes. All right, rotisserie is on. Now, now we're going to get up to temp and then okay, what's temp, temp is here. So the rate is, means what? The rate is uh, where we want the temp, which is uh, about two, 220, somewhere under 220. And then the black is the way it actually is, right? Correct. So you heat it up really fast, right? From oh yeah, it will. Right. right. Ago. Correct. Okay. All right, so we turn it on evac mode here, and that gets rid of the hot air first before you open the oiler pit. We've got our six uh, pastrami briskets. We've got ten of the uh, regular briskets, so we got sixteen briskets going in. And yeah. you said you can load how many in there total? This one, uh, forty-eight. Forty-eight briskets at a time. Okay, and this yeah. is the eight hundred bottle, right? There's another yes. model, a bigger one. Yes, there that's even bigger. bigger that's twice the capacity. So right. if you run a big restaurant. Man, you can go bigger. Go big. Go big. Go big, go big. So you like to load about two? Uh, two. I, yeah, right now because we're just doing this thing. Two we'll at a time? Do, yeah, yeah. we'll do 40. 40, we do the, the two at a time. Now, I always get asked by people, uh, you ever have rotisserie rack tipping over? Right. Right, so you're going to be careful, right? Correct. So you're going to load it carefully so that it's nice and even. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't tip over. A lot of people who don't use the rotisserie, they end up tipping over the rotisserie. It's a royal pain. So all the meat fell at the bottom. That's running 200 right now. Right, 200 with just that. just a, that amount of embers. So it's so well insulated, right? That uh, it actually works. It's well, well insulated, right? right? Super insulated, man. Look at that. There's not a lot of coals. You can get 200 degrees in the pit. We're getting ready to fire up the Myron Mixon H2O smokers. These are smokers that cost uh, probably in the uh, 17, 18 thousand dollar range uh, before installation. It's got a big uh, water pan here. And we're filling up with the water here, and uh, we got a fire chamber here. Then get let it, lit it with some uh, charcoal, get the temperature up, and then stick the whole hog into that big cavity that you see right in front of you. And uh, Junior is gonna use wood. This is uh, again pecan, right? Pecan. Uh, yeah. Got them everywhere, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. 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 It's not completely finished, but I, I had to get it uh, put to work. It's gonna be a reverse flow, gravity, uh, not, not, not a gravity feed, but a reverse flow smoker, insulated smoker. Here's my firebox. Okay, nice. That's all the wood you need to run it this hot. You notice th these are my dampers. Yeah, hot, hot. Old, old school dampers. Old, old school dampers. There, so there's no uh, exhaust vent. This, this is my vent. So, folks, try these at home, right? This is just old school right here. <laughs> Yeah. And you need a lot of muscles to work this. Look at that. You got beautiful chicken. Nice. Still got about another hour and we'll be hour. ready. So about a two-hour chicken? Correct. Nice. Nice fire underneath. So you can yeah. put, put, put everything on top rack, right? Top or bottom. Right? They're, they're all cooking oh, evenly. Nice. Beautiful chicken here. Yeah. Good, man. Give me some chicken meat. 